It's reunion week on Wake Up, so Lane Kiffin shows us how meeting up with your ex can be awkward and profitable. And it's cold and flu season, so we speak to our medical correspondent, Dr. Bo Wallace. He tells us why, if your sinus is acting up, he should just go in and drain that sucker. It's time to wake, wake up, up, college football! football. Week nine is officially done with, and you know what? If you are disappointed in your team, Ryan Nanny, it's okay. Because Pitt probably Ooh. had it worse and did worse by their fans. Not great. No, not the best. If you look at this drive chart. Five. Sadness. Five. Sadness. Five. Sadness. Five sadness. Five sadness. Yeah. Oh. So, you know what? Put it in perspective. Life could be worse. Yeah, it, this was like those people who scheduled the doctor, dentist, and optometrist appointment mm -hmm. all for the same day that they take off of work. And Pitt is so sick. Oof. Pitt is really sick. Oops. Like but teeth falling out. But, okay, I'm really sick of talking about Pitt. <laughs> Let's talk about what your awesome thing of week nine was because there were a lot of awesome things. So, staying in the ACC, mm -hmm. going back to Thursday night, Let's talk about Duke Johnson and the Miami Oh, offense. we definitely should. Because they couldn't throw the ball, and they kind of just stopped trying against Virginia Tech. Yeah. And it didn't matter because Duke Johnson had his best rushing day of his career. Yep. 249 yards, two touchdowns, just was, un I mean, Frank Beamer said it himself, he was basically unstoppable. Yes, he was. Miami is still rounding into form, and it's very hard to say what the ceiling is and what the floor is. They've had good but there wins. Are, there are pieces now that are. There are definite. definitely pieces. They've had they've had good wins. They've had bad losses. Yeah, Brad Kai is getting better. The yep. defense appears to be very top, good. Top twenty, top fifteen. Yes, easy to say. So obviously the Florida State game is looming, but it's kind of weird that this is a year where we, when we've looked at Florida State schedules and said, okay, here are the possible hurdles. Right. We've never once said Miami. And more and more. And more and more you have to say, I, I, look, I'm not picking Miami to win that game at this point, but they have a bye before it yep. in a couple weeks. And they play defense and run the ball. Yeah. Is and that, Florida State has struggled at times to stop the run. It's, it's enough to at least put a scare into Florida State. Absolutely. Uh, Duke Johnson was a known quantity going into the yes. season. We knew he was very good. Yes. Trevon Boykin we knew was okay and had ability but really didn't show much. We weren't much. even sure he was going to play quarterback. Absolutely not. He's a top five player in college football. Jeez. And he had seven touchdown passes against Texas Tech, a, a flailing Texas Tech, mind you, but he was great through the air, efficient. It's not like he threw 75 times. It wasn't Connor Halliday. They put up 82 points against Tech, which I think is the most since Oklahoma State did it a couple of years ago in Big 12 play, and he ran well. They, the whole team ran well. Aaron Green did, had a fantastic game, and he is so on point. He is so efficient. Gray had a great day receiving. It was, it was fantastic to see, and now TCU is legitimately... There's nobody above TCU in the Big 12. It's, it's hard to find somebody. I mean, you can maybe make a case for Kansas State sure. just because... I mean, shutting out Texas, Texas right. isn't that impressive, but right. still, pitching a shutout's a hard thing to yeah. do. Uh, but yeah, Gary Patterson is just burning everything down. He's so mad. <laughs> Sonny Cumbie's making himself money, by the way. Going going four and eight last year. Yeah. Lit something in him. Right in here. Very right, right here. Boom. Right, right in the anger pouch. <laughs> anger pouch. Anger pouch. They have West Virginia on the road, yeah. and then they host Kansas State in the next couple weeks. So it's going to be fun. Gonna be real fun. It's going to be real, real fun. What do you were you not expecting in week nine? So we we should probably talk about LSU uh, beating Old Miss at home mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. uh, not a particularly high scoring game. No. But it is worth noting how they were able to pull this upset. Sure. Um, they ran the ball like crazy. Yep. Super LSU thing to do. They mm -hmm. had 55 rushing attempts and only 16 passes. Yep. Which was probably the right mix. Right move. Given the way things went. Uh, but really... And given their quarterback's name is Jennings Anthony. Yeah. Jennings, comma, Anthony. Probably not your best not bet best. for efficiency. No. Um, they also just... The defense really came to play when they, they had did. to. They were con Especially in the second half, they had bad field position. Put in really bad Almost position. all game. Mm -hmm. uh, but they stepped up. They made life miserable for Bo Wallace. They did enough to contain the run. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, com I mean, the fact that LSU turned the ball over four times and won this game is really a testament to the defense yes. being able to say, okay, we're going to put out the fires. We're going to just constantly... Tamping things down. The youth played well. The defensive backs were all over. Yeah. Ole Miss receivers. They were constantly sending pressure. They And then, as you mentioned, the running backs, the, the McGee, Hilliard, and Fournette trio, yes. especially that last drive, that 95-yard oh, drive. Oh, brutal to watch. Horses. Yeah. So, 
LSU, a like team, a really LSU win. A team we thought was dead three weeks ago is yeah. now back in the SEC West race. Yeah, and I figured they we, we'd see something like this just because they're too talented yeah. not to be this well, and they're the track record of Les Miles and John Chavis. But yeah, this was it all coming together like that was impressive. And Bo Wallace was skittish and rattled Which in Tiger we, Stadium. Which we, we'd seen eventually. at certain points yeah. this season, yeah. Unexpected for you. Penn State's. Coming back, you know, really looking listless in the first half. Yeah. Referee issues aside, because the, definitely the, the refs were pretty what? bad in this game. <laughs> but that aside, they get the pick six in the second half. They're down 17 nothing. They get the pick six. Christian Hackenberg throws a very nice <laughs> touchdown pass. They get that late field goal from the, the malign Sam Ficken. They, they score a touchdown in overtime. Ultimately, they couldn't put together multiple overtimes. But the fact that Ohio State... We have a better picture of them against a decent team yeah. because they hadn't been playing decent teams. Right, yeah. And for Penn State to show the kind of fight against a very good team, it's encouraging. Penn State's not going to be very good this year for the rest of the season, but the fact that now Ohio State, I called it a loss win because it's not looking very good for Ohio State moving forward. That said, Penn State doesn't have Joey Bosa. That, and is, Joey that is also Bosa, true. Joey Bosa just picks up your van and throws it at you. Like, that's how he tackles you. Yeah, he's, he is an embodiment of quit hitting yourself. Yeah. Quit hitting yourself. It's sort of like if the Incredible Hulk had impulse control. <laughs> and the ability to rush an edge. Yeah. Oh, the Incredible Hulk can totally Oh, win. yeah, he definitely yeah, can. come on. All right, meaningful. When you look forward as a result of Week 9, what to you stands out? So, Michigan State crushing Michigan at home is not at all no. something that you didn't see coming. Right, to be expected. Uh, the fact that they were able to get Jeremy Langford going on the ground mm-hmm. was great. Defense looked outstanding as usual. Yep. It's mostly comforting just because we had worried that Michigan State couldn't put together four quarters of the game. Exactly, yeah. And they did, I mean, they stomped on Michigan when they had to. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of that was hate. Yeah, some of that hate was just, stomp. Just hate stomping, right. but it, uh, hate stomping still a stomping. Yes. Uh, so, looking forward Given that Ohio State struggled yesterday. Yeah, and travels to East Lansing. Yes. Uh, it's, it does feel like Michigan State has refound its mojo, so to speak, mm-hmm. and is still the, the team to be reckoned with in the Big Ten right now. And H- hard to really gauge against Michigan. It is. Hard it to is. gauge, but yes, the completeness of the, the completeness word? I don't know. Of the offense, the balance of the offense. Right. Jeremy Langford, as you mentioned, on the ground. Connor Cook was very good. Yep. And then just the, the harassment of still a talented Michigan team. Yeah. The offensive line's not good, but Michigan State, four quarters of hate stomping. And it is, it's just worth taking a step back. Yeah. I know we're in the middle of the season, but saying... This job, when Mark D'Antonio got there, mm-hmm. was totally average. Michigan right. State was a Big Ten team that was always on the cusp of maybe they make a bowl, maybe they Seven, don't. Seven, five, eight, and four, Never yeah. a good bowl. Right. And now he's made them into a year-in, year-out top ten team. Yeah. Give me your three stars. I'll turn them into a double-digit win and, team. And it is, worth, it is worth pointing out. In you know, if you're looking out there and saying, my team's not very good, my team is always sort of this middle or cellar dweller. Right. You can turn it around. Yep. Just you have to find Mark D'Antonio. Yes, you have to find Mark D'Antonio. And you have to pin him down, and he's very strong. To me, what was most meaningful from yesterday was still, it's probably Mississippi State. Even though they're the number one team, to go to a a frisky, pretty above-average Kentucky team at this point. They've shown themselves to be talented. Patrick Cole's played really, really well. He is very good. That defense is fast and can swarm. Still a little bit undisciplined. But Mississippi State going on the road to a a hostile-ish Lexington and surviving their first time as the number one team in the country ever, Mm -hmm. surviving... Haymakers, broken plays going for 73-yard touchdown passes. And testament to even Dak Prescott, not a great day through the air, but they were able to run the ball well. Josh Robinson, bowling ball. He'll he'll tell you. Look look his name up on YouTube. According to him, you're going to see some things. He's, He's... He's got some junk in the trunk. He's ridiculous. There is junk (laughs) in that Robinson trunk. So, But Mississippi State, that's one of those games that a, a lesser team even at number one, could have lost. Because oh, yeah. the, it's the, the senior leadership, the upperclassmen leadership. The defense, all season long, hasn't been great. They've been fantastic in the red zone. They survived those stupid broken plays. Mm-hmm. That, it's an impressive survival on the road in the SEC. Yeah, it is also a weird testament to Kentucky. Yeah. Got blown out by LSU last mm-hmm. week on the road. Came Really turned it around and Got didn't let that ruin game. their season. Right. I mean, granted, they didn't beat Mississippi State, but... They are, you can tell Mark Stoops is building something that is going to be very tricky in the SEC East going forward. Yeah, in the SEC East, there are are at least one to two teams that are looking dangerous. The most unguarded of orchards. This is true. Take all the apples you want. Yeah, all right. Let's stay in the SEC just because this is such a beautiful thing. It is a 350 pound offensive lineman with a, a fat guy trick. 
touchdown. Yeah. Pass. Oh, that's a beautiful. Oh, that throw off his back foot. Fadeaway throw. Miss you, Jared Lorenzen. Yeah, we do. All right. His name is Ryan. My name is Dan. This is Wake Up College Football. We'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.